Hello, good evening, and welcome to Tissue Network. Wishing you all a very happy and prosperous new year. I am Tingnay Tim Hokip, and I'll be hosting tonight's program. Today's top headlines include Two civilians assaulted by Mayday militants dressed as commandos in Moray brought to Lamka District Hospital. Sit in protest held at peace ground condemning Mayday Commandos' brutality over Cookie Zoo at Moray. KNAB and Technopol Village volunteers clarifies over non involvement of KNAB, KNA, or UKLF in the New Year's Sud Aug at Moray Town. People in Boulder area soon to require visa to cross over to India. News in details. Malipur is still in turmoil despite the claim of normalcy met by the Chief Minister Biren Singh. On the morning of 2nd January, two civilians who belong to the Kukizo community were beaten savagely by the Maitai militants who wore commando uniforms. The victims, namely Lam Mintang, age 32, and Zamkulin Lupo, 28 years old, were dragged out of their homes and severely assaulted by a large number of Maitai militants. Lam Mintang is an auto driver who has occasionally done cultivating work to support his family, whereas Zamkulin is a medical student who is an intern at Moret Hospital. Mayday militants groups dragged them from their homes, severely beat them, and left them unconscious in front of SBI Bank in Moray. The army transferred the two victims to key location point in Assam Rifle Camps, Moray, for dressing. They were later transferred to an inspection bungalow through ambulance. The Kuki Kanglai Lompi managed to transport them from Haolin Pai Village in Moray to District Hospital in Chorotanpur. It is now reported that the locals were not able to stop the assault as the Mayday groups were heavily armed and violent. The two victims were brought in district hospital in critical condition with numerous injuries all over their body where Jampolain is still unconscious. During his interview with a reporter, the victim, Lam Mintang, stated that two Assam rifle personnel, one male and the other female, came with a large group of Mayday militants dressed as state commandos. They checked his house and went through his phone. With nothing suspicious, the group left. Yet, the Mayday militant came back for the second time and dragged him and Jampolain from their homes and beat them with their weapons. They drag us separately, and more than 20 Mayday militants blindfolded me, ghost my mouth, strangled me, and started beating me with their weapons. The two Assam Rifle personnel were nowhere to be found once the militants started to get violent. My other card and my phone are still with them, say Lam Mintang. He mentioned getting hit numerous times but fell unconscious after two strides with sturdy rod to his head. Lam Mintang claimed that the only reason he was beaten was because he owned a jungle boot for his cultivation purposes, which happened to be the closest items that they could find in his home that resembled military items. Hainé Tim, the wife of Lam Mintang, expressed how unacceptable it is for the Mayday terrorists to be able to roam around towns and assault innocent civilians with merry speculation. She claimed that the jungle boot could be purchased by anyone in the market and it is a common tool used by the cultivators. She questioned the government justice system for the mistreatment her husband received and the unending violence towards the cookie zoo in Moray. The Tang Moray, located on the border of Manipur state and Myanmar, has been under the threat of Mayday militants since the ethnic violence started. During his visit, Amit Sa, the Home Minister of India, reassured them of safety and to withdraw the state commando within weeks. Till today, the people of Moria are still waiting for the promise to be fulfilled so peace can be restored again in their town. TC Networks here. This is Blizzo reporting from District Hospital in Lamka, which is a local name for Churachanpur District in Manipur. Um, I am here standing, um, and behind me are victims of Moria ethnic violence, which um, which was taken place yesterday, January the second in the morning. Um, from on my left is Lam Mintang of 32 age. On on my right is Zam Kolen Lupo of 28 years old. During an interview with Lam Mintang, he he stated that he's an, just an auto driver and uh, occasionally done a cultivation. And Zam Kolen is a medical student who is currently assisting the medical staff in More District Hospital.
During, the, in, during our interview, Mr. Lamintang told us that the two army personnel led a groups of numbers of Meitei militants who were dressed in commando's uniform. They barge into their homes, they search, they conduct a search operation without any warranties. However, they do not find anything and they have left. They come back for the second time and conduct again another search operation. They destruct their homes, they destruct everything in the house and found a zangle boot, which is used, uh, which is a very uh, common accessories for the uh, tribal cultivators in Manipur. And because he owned that boot, just because he owned that boot, he was dragged out of his house and then severely beaten up. And both of them were dragged out of their house and got separated and beaten up by the Meite militants who were dressed as commandos. Um, he also reported that there were more than 20 commandos and even though the two army personnel, one male and female, led the commandos, they were nowhere to be found once they got targeted and once they were severely beaten up in front of SBI um, office in uh, Moray. They were strangled, their mouth were gauze, and they were not able to scream for help. And even though the locals, the locals, the people of Moray were trying to assist, they were trying to help and stop the Meitei militants, they were not able to because there were too many. And um, so currently, Zam Holin is still unconscious. We are not able to talk to him. He is still in very, very critical conditions. And uh, Lamintang is here. He's, um, he managed to talk to us, uh, luckily. We also also talk with Lene Tim, the wife of Lamintha. She is questioning why is her husband beaten up by a um, number of people, the Meitei militants who are dressed as commandos. Why are the Meitei militants able to roam around in Moray? Um, why are they not being stopped? And why is her husband beaten up just because he owned a zangle boot, which is normally used for cultivation, which is a very common accessories for the tribal community. And a lot of questions has arise from the civilians of Moray and even in the um, Zou, Kuki Zou community. However, no action has been taken to provide safety to the people of community. There are attacks still going on. Houses are still burning. Arson still taking place. Meitei militants still attacking the innocent civilians of More. Another question that comes from the public is that Amit Shah, um, the Home Minister of India, have visited on the 31st of May how, and he has promised safety and reassurance to the people of More. However, till today, the More city is still continuously uh, targeted by the Meitei groups and there are still house, homes that are burned, there are still um, arsons and attacks from the Meitei militants and it's still constantly going and the people are still suffering. So the question is, when is the government going to withdraw the Meitei commandos, the Meitei militants, and when is the um, government going to protect the innocent civilians of More? This is Blizzo reporting. Um, you're watching TC Network. Today at around 11 a.m., the ITLF Women Wing held a sit-in protest in front of the Wall of Remembrance at Tuibong. It is the first sit-in protest held by the Kukizo Women Folks for this year, 2024, showing their discontentment and grief over the barbaric act of the Meitei Commandos, who not only burned but also openly looted houses of the Kukizo inhabitants of More in broad daylight. They also protest about the brutality shown towards the Kukizo by the Meitei Commando, where they mercilessly beat up civilians and misusing their powers. The women folks are the concerned authorities to remove the Meitei Commandos from Moray since they install fear instead of peace for the local residents, which prove their meaningless existence in the area. The ITLF and KOTU also called a 24 hours total shutdown in all the Kukizo inhabited areas and requested for the removal of the Meitei commandos from Moray town. ITLF media cell convener Ginza Vulzong in his speech said that the sit in protest shall continue until we accomplish our demand for separate administration and encourage all the women folks to diligently carry out the sit in protest in the future too. <laughs> Mereka, mereka nak 
Cooking in Pete and Nepal Joint Secretary Sogin gives a brief report on how brutally the commandos treat the Kukizo citizens of Moray and narrated the incident of December 30, 2023, where one Peter Mate, a school teacher serving in Bethel High School, was unlawfully arrested by the Mayday commando while grocery shopping. He was detained in a swap and was mercilessly tortured overnight by the commandos, and he barely made back home at around 4 a.m. the following day. Further, the Mayday commandos also arrested two friends, namely Lam Min Tang and Zam Kulin of Chavang Pai Moray, during an operation. The police commando took the mansion to their camps and brutally beat them up. The two victims were brought to Lamka Hospital for treatment. Moray is an important border town for the Kukizo citizens, and therefore we should by all means defend it from the invading communities, the Mayday, he added. <laughs> จากที่เอาเตาวลุนตะหอซงจานินจุนนลุงเฮาวันเตียกิโบเลกะลุงอเนวโกยินอิติไลจะนิซงเลปันตะลาดิวตะดิมะกิติเตียกะกาดิวอ
It is reiterated that the name of Kayan Abbey should not be dragged unnecessarily to create a wrong narrative on the contemporary communal issue pertaining to the Maytays in the valley and the cookies in the hills. It also cautioned the Maytays CM of Manipur that any intention to turn is the image of Kayan Abbey will not augur well and politely request to refrain from making further any such irresponsible statements ever again in the future, say the release. Making a clarification on the involvement of KNAB, KNA, or UKLF, or other groups in gunfight that broke up yesterday at Moray, the Technopol District Village volunteers issued a press statement replying the Meite run media and national media like the Northeast Life regarding their biased report of involvement of KNAB, KNA, or UKLF in the incident. The statement reads, the news report of blaming KNAB, KNA or UKLF involvement in more gunfight is totally false. It is concocted and baseless allegations made by Meite Media and Meite Chief Minister and Biren Singh so as to conceal stationing of Meite militants around by Tingle among the Meite police commandos in More town. In fact, the gunfight broke out when Meite militants, Arambai Tingle, who were masqueraded as police commandos, went to burn down Tavang Pai More, Ward No. 7. The press release also said that the combined forces of Meite police commandos, Meite militants, and Arambai Tingle went to Tavang Pai and abducted two innocent Skukizo civilians and tried to burn down Tavang Pai, following which the village volunteers compared to fire upon the state sponsored terrorist group. In the ensuing gunfight, the village volunteers inflicted heavy casualty, killing three Maytays at spot. The death of three Maytays in yesterday's gun battle was concealed by the Maytay commandos as they, the deceased, were masqueraded as police commandos. It is well known to all the more public dead shopkeepers, overground workers, sympathizers of Maytay militants, and butcher who sells meat at more bazaar before the communal crisis are also masqueraded as police commandos and stationed in more town. Forget about KNAB, KNA, UKLF, or other we the Technopol District Village volunteer alone is more than enough to tackle these state sponsored terrorists. Dragging the names of all those unrelated groups, KNAB and others, is just a ploy to plot the Cookie Zoo community in bed light and to bring in more Meite militants and Meite commandos to Moray Town. The release further added that the state media run by Meites and some national media, particularly Northeast Life, are biased in favor of one community. We urge them all to go with media ethics. The Technopol District Village volunteers hereby clarifies that there is no involvement of KNAB, KNA, or UKLF, or others in more gunfight. The village volunteers will continue to fight the combined forces of Maytay militants, Arambai Tingle, and Maytay police commandos until they are removed from More Town. We will continue to fight against these state sponsored terrorists who try to annihilate Kokizo people. The Union government is all set to scrap the free movement regime along the Myanmar border, as senior government officials said on January 2nd. People living in border areas who could cross over to India will soon require visas, the official added. As per report of the Hindu, India and Myanmar share an enfanced border, and people on either side have familial and ethnic ties, which prompted the arrangement in the 1970s. It was last revised in 2016. The officials say that around 200 km of the boulder will be fenced and a tender will be issued in the next few days. He added that a survey of the boulder areas with the help of drones has been completed. Amid apprehension, states such as Nagaland and Mizoram may oppose the move. Officials said, boulder security is center domains. We may take note of their concerns, but the final decision is of the Union government. We are in talks with Myanmar. The report further said, under the FMR, even member of the Hill Tribes, who is either a citizen of India or a citizen of Myanmar, and who resides within 16 km on either side of the boulder, can cross the boulder on production of a boulder pass, usually valid for a year, and can stay for up to two weeks per visit. The Manipur government has suspended the FMR since 2020 following the COVID-19 pandemic. Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh said on September 23, 2023 that he has urged the Ministry of Home Affairs to cancel the FMR along the Indian-Myanmar border and complete its fencing. He attributed the ongoing ethnic violence in the states to the free movement of people from across the border.
After a military coup in Myanmar in February 2021, there was an influx of undocumented migrants. Over 40,000 refugees took shelter in Mizoram, and around 4,000 refugees are said to have entered Manipur. The migrants belonging to the Kuki Chinzo ethnic groups share ethnic ties with communities in Mizoram and Manipur. Let's take a short commercial break. Hi, welcome to Horeb Educational Academy, the first Cambridge International School in Manipur. If you are looking for the right school to continue class 9, we are the right place for you. Admission is open for IGCSE 2024, recognized in India as class 9 and 10. An international education from Cambridge is about much more than developing subject knowledge. Our programs and resources help develop learners who are confident, responsible, innovative, reflective and engaged with society. Cambridge International is part of University of Cambridge, UK. It is recognized globally, including India. With the support from Cambridge, we are hoping to deliver a world-class education with technology integrated and best syllabus the town have not experienced before. The last date of admission is 28 February 2024. To get details, visit www.horebedu.in or office at Mulhun Rengkai behind Vishal Mart. Welcome back. The Central Bureau of Investigation has filed two separate charge sheets against five accused in connection with the case of two missing students in Manipur who were feared killing during the ethnic violence in the state, officials say today. Photos showing their bodies surfaced on September 25, leading to protests mainly by students. The CBI, however, is yet to find the bodies. As per report of the NDTV, the agency filed the church seats in the interconnected cases before a designated special court in Assam's Kamrud, giving a sequence of events before they went missing. The CBI said the boy went to the tuition class of the girl on July 6 and after picking her up on, up on his motorcycle, proceeded towards Bisnupur side. From there, they rode towards Old Kachar Road. They were intercepted by a group of people and held captive by the five accused named in the church seat, the CBI said. The accused forcibly put them in a vehicle and took them to an undisclosed location where they were suspectedly killed, the CBI said in a statement. Among the accused, Pao Lun Mang was arrested from Pune and Pao Min Lun Haukip as Malsom Haukip and Hingne Chong Bai De were arrested from Chorotanpur district but Nogin Bai De is on the run. The parents of the missing teenagers had filed first information reports with the Infal Police and Lamphel Police on July 8 and July 19 respectively. The girl's father had alleged the boy may have kidnapped his daughter to marry her without consent, while the boy's father alleged his son may have been abducted by miscreants. The CBI has filed charge seats in both cases against the five accused. Further investigation is continuing, the CBI said in the statement. Combined team of Manipur Police and Central Forces has conducted search operations and area domination in the fringe and vulnerable areas of Infal West, Kangpopi and Infal East districts in the last 24 hours. In the state operations, one bunker was dismantled at Kangpopi district. During the last 24 hours, the situation in the state was tense but under control with sporadic firing and congregation of protesters. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, armed groups launched an attack on a joint team of security forces in Moray, Technopol district, employing gunfire and explosive. The security forces responded with a strong counter-offensive. During the ensuing gunfight, six security personnel sustained splinter injuries and have been evacuated to Infal for further medical treatment. Forces are on high alert to prevent any untoward incident. On the other hand, movement of 209 and 125 vehicles along National Highway 37 and National Highway 2 respectively with essential items have been unsured. Strict security measures are also taken up in all vulnerable locations and security convoy is provided in sensitive stretches in order to ensure free and safe movement of the vehicles. In the meantime, a total of 141 nakas or checkpoints were installed in different districts of Manipur, both in the hill and the valley, and police detained 2 to 5 persons in connection with violations in different districts of the state. Security forces also appeal to general public not to believe in rumors and be aware of false videos. Any circulation of unfounded videos, etc., may be confirmed from the rumor free number 92335 of Central Control Room. Further, appeal is made to public to return the looted arms, ammunition, and explosive to the police or nearest security forces immediately, said Manipur Police Control Room in a press release. 
Manipur government extends mobile internet suspension in nine bouldering areas for 15 days. Keeping in view the prevailing law and order situation arising out of the recent violent incidents reported from the state, the Manipur government on Tuesday extended the suspension of mobile internet services in the two-kilometer stretch in the bouldering between nine districts for another 15 days. The nine districts are Kakching, Bisnupur, Imphal West, Imphalis, Thaubal, Kangpopi, Tengnopal, Chandil, and Jorachanpur. Manipur Commissioner D. Ranjit Singh cited in a notification that, in view of the prevailing law and order situation, the state government has decided to continue with the suspension of mobile internet services in the two kilometer stretch between nine districts for another 15 days. After around months, the Manipur government had on December 3, 2023, lifted the ban on mobile internet services in large parts of the violent hit state. However, the ban continued in bolder areas of the nine districts. Mobile internet services were first banned in Manipur eight months ago after ethnic violence broke out between non-tribal Meitei and tribal Kokizo communities on May 3 last year. Since then, the ban has been extended after every five days. The School Management Committee, Bethel High School, More, released a press release condemning the unlawful torture of one Peter Mate. The press release reads, Strong condemnation on torturing of Mr. Peter Holkolal Mate, educator. Mr. Peter Holkolal Mate is an assistant teacher of Bethel High School, Mr. Veng More, Watt No. 2, with the appointment number BHS slash T47 slash DPC 2021. On that fateful day of 30 December 2023, he attended school office for some paperwork. While returning home, he traveled from Ward No. 1 to Moray Bazaar, being unaware of the firing that took place near Lighton Turf Ground Junction, Moray. He was arrested by Moray Police Commando personnel at Moray Bazaar. After taking him to the commando complex, he was interrogated where he revealed his identity, possessing no incriminate documents nor firearms. But all the more, they charged him to be a cadre of KNA, UKLF, or Villas Volunteer. After removing his clothes, he was kicked, punched, thrashed, and stung with boot until he fell unconscious. On regaining his consciousness, he found himself clothless, shivering with cold, which was fueled by the pain of multiple cuts and bruises all over his body. The commandos took him by vehicle up to Mori Bazar, Dharam Salah, and left him alone to die so that the matter be not known to the public. From there, he walked and crawled and hardly managed to reach his home by himself at around 4 a.m. The commando personnel had snatched his mobile phone and a scooty. He is now undergoing treatment at Lamka District Hospital. CT scan results saw multiple cracks in the skull, nostril cartilage, facial bone, jaw bone, etc. As such is the case, we, the school management committee, teaching and non-teaching staff, parents and students, strongly condemn the inhuman act of atrocities committed by the Moray Police Commando personnel on such simple and devoted teacher by giving him third degree torture. Therefore, we ask the authority concerned state government to give justice to the victim by suspending the perpetrators at the earliest possible time, else parents and students' body will launch a series of agitations. The school management committee, the parents' body, the teaching and non-teaching staffs, and the students strongly condemn this kind of activities done on a simple and a sincere teacher who is working for the society. So I urge the authority concerned to take appropriate action on the culprit, the police commando personnel, even to suspend them based on the law of the land. Otherwise, we are going to take up different types of agitations the student bodies and the parents will take up this. And still his mobile phone and his scooty is still with the commando personnel. Thank you. When we thought the COVID pandemic was over, experts detected a fast-spreading virus called JN1, a sub-variant of COVID-19 in India. Within the past 24 hours, at least 312 COVID sub-variant JN1 cases were detected in the country. India records 573 fresh COVID-19 cases and two fatalities. The Karnataka state registers a total of 296 new cases and one reported death.
and Delhi reports 16 new cases of COVID-19 subvariant Gen 1. The Health Department of Maharashtra reported that on Tuesday, a total of 105 rare coronavirus positive cases and zero fatalities were recorded. So far, the state has reported a total of 32 cases of the JN1 subvariant of the virus. With the fresh cases, the state's overall case tally rose to more than 81 lakhs and told to more than 1.48 lakhs, it added. On Monday, the state recorded 70 cases and zero fatalities of the 32 cases of JN1 variant reported till now. It said the week from December 27 to January 2 recorded 811 cases, a sharp spike from 194 from the preceding week from December 20 to 26. In addition to that, Delhi has reported 16 cases of COVID-19 subvariant JN1, with a majority of the patients recovering in home isolation, officials said on Tuesday. The national capital had reported its first case of COVID-19 subvariant JN1 last week. According to an official, reports of 90 samples sent for genome sequencing were received on Monday. Out of these, 15 samples were detected with JN1 variant, 2 with XBB subvariant, and the rest with other variants, the official said. That is all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.